Mercedes Slap and David Mercer on the battle ahead. Mercedes, it's, uh, it's starting to heat up, huh? <laughs> That's an understatement, Charles. Come on, it's already heated up. Uh, but what you're trying to see is that these two candidates are positioning themselves. They're, they're basically in a way that you had, obviously, Hillary Clinton coming out strong with that anti-Trump foreign policy speech last week. And then all of a sudden you see Donald Trump saying, wait a second here, I can be tough too. So he delivered a strong uh, speech on Tuesday, basically talking about the economy, talking about America first, talking about how he's going to help these workers uh, who have been very disillusioned by the Obama economy uh, have an opportunity to have their wages increased, to have better jobs in America with better trade deals. And so that economic populist message really works for Donald Trump. And when he sticks with that message, I think you see more voters attracted to and, and, and going forward and supporting Donald Trump. Although, David, uh, if Donald Trump comes out and starts talking about how the Clintons made all of this money, I, you know, there's a lot of resentment against politicians. But the notion that any politicians could actually uh, somehow end up making $100 million, whether they sold influence or not, rubs people the wrong way. Well, what I think would rub people the wrong way is claiming that you're worth uh, billions and billions of dollars, but yet uh, show no evidence of that either in releasing your tax returns. Uh, even Nixon released his when he was under audit. So Donald so Trump, let's release your tax returns. David, David, you think someone who's unemployed <laughs> or looking for a job for the last two years cares about Donald Trump's taxes or whether or not no. there'll be job creation over the next four years? They, they, they care about that and they care about what Obama has done in creating uh, for the last 75 months job growth. Uh, we saw what happened when we handed over the reins of the economy to a uh, Republican president. It went afield and almost off the cliff. I think I don't think Americans want to see us go back to losing 600, 800 th thousand jobs a month. They want job growth, and that's what you'll get with Democratic administrations you know, and particularly Hillary Clinton. You know, Mercedes, it's going to be hard to argue job growth if we keep getting 38,000 a month. Now, yeah. I understand, and the average American understands it, we're not in that position where we're losing 600,000. That was a unique, desperate time in the American economy. People do expect more, more robust job growth. I, I absolutely agree, and I think when you look at Clinton, Clinton's victory speech, she keeps talk, spoke, speaking about the Americans who have been left behind. Uh, remember, these Americans who were left behind, was, they were a byproduct of the Obama economy. Uh, what we're seeing is an anemic growth uh, rate, shrinking jobs, business startups investments. Those have declined sharply. There is little hope in this economy. And, and the thing that, that Obama has failed to do really is work with Congress to pass tax reform, which is what we also need in a, in, to really boost investments in America. And so I think for, uh, for Hillary Clinton to follow this lead of Obama, and we know that if the economy numbers are still bad going into November, I think that it negatively impacts uh, Hillary Clinton, especially because the economy is just such a strong topic for Donald Trump, and it's an area where he's really been able to connect with voters. Uh, David, it's hard to argue that. Uh, there, almost every poll shows that Donald Trump has a substantial lead when it comes to the, the topic of the economy. Also, Hillary Clinton sort of focusing on the lower end of things, higher minimum wage, things like that. Uh, is, is that what sparks a nation to greatness, uh, you know, or, or is that just sort of the politics of grievance and envy that really has been turning a lot of people off? Well, Mercedes just mentioned that uh, D Donald Trump is looking for higher wages, yet declines to support the minimum wage. You can't have the productivity outpacing wages, and we need to increase the minimum wage so that people can have a livable wage and we can stop losing folks out of the middle class. So you got to create job growth. You need infrastructure development. Our bridges are falling down. You need investment. And with investment, you get jobs. And that's both in the public and the private sector. And if I might add, the majority, the vast majority of jobs created under this Democratic Obama administration has been in the private sector and a decline in government public sector jobs. Well, the, pu that's the, the what government see. went broke. But last month, out of those 38,000, 13,000, and were created by government, and that's scary stuff. And here's the thing, Still, Mercedes. that's lower than private sector. Here, here's the thing, Mercedes. Uh, the private sector at this point would love to be unleashed. They would love to have the shackles I taken know. off. would love to have lower taxes because if someone's impressed with them creating 23,000 jobs, David, <clears throat> what if they created 230,000? What if they created half a million jobs? I think that's possible with the DNA of this country. 
Well, especially when you're when these companies are dealing with the regulations put forth by the Obama administration, also the tax hikes plus Obamacare. I mean, businesses are scared. And they're not necessarily willing to invest right now in our workers and in our nation. And that is, I think, one of the biggest issues that we're dealing with, plus the trade issue as well, which is something that Donald Trump, Trump talks about, the trade negotiations. How are we going to stop China from a currency manipulation or, or stealing away our intellectual property? These are serious issues that really, if that I think Obama has just been weak on. And I think that with Hillary, you're going to get much of the same. Uh, Char in terms of her explanation right. that you call David. it. Charles, if I can just say, on average, over the last 75 months, you, you, we keep uh, going with the latest one month of 38,000 jobs. On average, you've had 200,000 plus jobs a month created at a clip uh, for the last 75 months. That's a good track record David, on, which a to build to, a, on which to build to have more jobs created. A, a large and we're chunk at 4. of those are part-time jobs, David. What do you say, though? to a large chunk of those being part-time jobs, and people who, who've been lucky enough to get new jobs are making less than they were before the Great Recession. What, 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 what I say to that is it better that they have that part-time, which is oh, a I leg up. I don't think it's good enough. If you let me finish, I'll tell you how good it can be and should be. And that is they have a foot in the door. That leads to full-time work, and it's certainly better than them let's, staying let's at home or way, not... By or the way, not David, being you just made a job. great argument for lower minimum wage. Wow. Uh, get, get these kids a foot in the door and, and then let them work up the ladder of success. But I think we'll start them off at fifteen dollars, uh, uh, fifteen dollars an hour. All right, let's leave it there. You guys are both fantastic. Appreciate it.